I'm going to move to a viewpoint which here we've got pointing the clock tower. And I'm going to choose another little tool which I have here. And that tool is going to be loads some work that I've been doing. And I've loaded some little models. If I just wait for a moment. We've got some, this is the only bit of the town we've done. We've got a little fragment of old college up here. This little clock tower square. If I just rotate my viewpoint round, a few other old buildings as well. Now, way, the way we want to work with this, if you happen to notice an oddity in my picture, there's no clock hands on the tower. And this is an idea, again, that we're playing around with. Every building that we will place down in the scene is just another object in Mike's archive. Um, Mike's been telling you about his various numbering systems that he's got for the building. So we have a numbering system for all of these buildings, so every building is connected back to the database. And the extra information that we want to build up in the database is an approximate timestamp, if we can do it, for just about every building that we represent here. Of course, these are, these are modern images, and we won't be able to put actual images to every building that's there, but we'll be looking at using some kind of generic imagery based on um, on our time kind of for building in different periods. And another idea which we want to develop is some kind of control over here, which is a slider, where you move the slider back through time, and it's in effect a, a chronology, and you'd be able to jump back in time, and then every building, based on its timestamp, but its timestamp would have two dates, a date when it came into existence and a date when it ceased to exist. So by moving to that period, you in fact created a little time machine. And if you stand back out of course of Pendinus and you, you run the little time dial, then you will see the town grow out from its nucleus in time. That's quite ambitious, but I can, I've got a thing that up in my head how that could look kind of quite nice. And I think actually getting it working and getting it developing it would be an awful lot easier than the mammoth task of collating all the objects that have these timestamps on them. But if we had the time, loads of time, and money, and a good few years, it would be something that would be wonderful to do. Just to show you quickly, oh, I wanted to refer, oh, yes, I started to mention why there was no hands on the clock. One idea we'd be messing around with, that the little tool that we would use for our time travel would be just to take the mouse and go over and grab, grab the, the, the hours on the clock and drag them. It's very difficult, it's a nice idea, but when you start doing it, you get into all sorts of problems. How can you represent a meaningful <coughs> chronology? Um, you know, crammed up on the, on, the, on the face of that clock. Maybe we have to have something a bit more bold here and big sliders going up and down and a coarse and, and a fine time slider. But there's something very attractive about grabbing the hands of the clock and the beam. There's two building types of building you can see in here. We see that the clock tower is modelled in slightly more detail than the surrounding buildings. The clock tower has been created using a separate modelling programme. This, as you um, see, it's all still in Internet Explorer, so this is still a web programme. It works from, from, from a web server. And you can add buildings into your town very simply using it. If I choose another tool set, which I've got in here, it's a little picture of a house on here. Now this can fail sometimes, but very often it works when I'm demonstrating it. But you can choose to just digitize an element on the map. And we can create a 3D representation directly on the map by extruding up from it. <coughs> If I choose um, an L-shaped building, again, I've now run the start on the corner, I can put 
digitise an L shape. And then I can choose generic roof construction geometries, as we call them. So if I change that to a, a, um, a ridge shape, I get a ridge formation. The rules aren't very clever, and working out in which direction the ridge of that building is orientated all depends on which point you digitised on first. And generally, you always start digitising your first line so that it runs parallel to a roof. And I've actually cocked it up there because it's written at the back of the building. It's not quite right. I'm going to look at another one, a simpler shape roof. What will happen if I select that roof and that building is there? I want to the ridge on that roof. That works. Straightforward. And then when I've done that, I can play around with the building and move it up and down. Uh, change, change the slope of the roof. I can go back and I can just choose one particular face of that building. And I, and I do see some keen general log on type users who want to do this, being able to use this functionality. I think we need to make it easier than it is at the moment. It's a little bit flaky, but I don't think it needs a lot more work to do that. We can choose an image. And we can, if you've got your digital camera and you've been out or with your phone thing, which you can take pictures with, apparently. Take that image and upload it immediately, and whilst that face of that building is selected, those two little red vertices, as I call them, are telling that the front face of the building is currently selected. I can pick my uploaded building image, and it's uploaded immediately and placed on the front of that building. And if I should rescale that building, Remember now which tool am I using for doing that? It's back to shape. If I rescale that building, it just stretches that accordingly. So all these buildings around the edge here were constructed like that. And you can see that you could actually do something which I think would look quite good quite quite quickly. What we haven't done and what we need, we have various little items over here for putting in parameters of height and ID, an ID number. That's the key to it. We always call that a UID, the unique ID. And by attaching numbers to these buildings, it's the link. It's the link back to Mike's archive. You get into a kind of all sorts of problems when you do things like this. Do you try to do something impressionistic or photoreal? And, um, in, in my line of work, my, my other jobs, something which is really changing in what I'm doing, that up until not long ago, this type of work was very, very techy, and it was computer techs, computer game, this kid world that's doing it, the world in which you work to do it. Some of the software that's becoming available now is really changing that, and now I work in a group of three people, and I'm the only techie. The only two people are just uh, are graphic artists. And they spend, one of those graphic artists is quite clever with using computer paintbox type programs, and the other guy is just a watercolorist. And he works on, we were doing some Roman constructions at the moment, so he will go out and do much of his time just doing watercolor drawings and facades. And he's very clever, he realizes that this software is capable of, of modeling light with a computer. So he, he has to break the rules a bit, but not quite of what a watercolorist would do when he draws a facade, because the watercolorist is, a, is aware that there's a little shadow underneath the eave of the building. But he has to be careful to create his nice impressionistic looking image, but, but not put too much shading in to create the three dimensionality. And of course, he can't really use perspective as well. That might be quite frustrating for him to do, but once we get him playing with and very easily loading his facade, he, he, he paints it and then he scans it, he loads it up using a bit of software like what we're using here, and then he's, he's working backwards and forwards. So I think he does get some satisfaction out of it, but he did find it very, very frustrating when he was first doing it. But I think what we have to try to do is you can't mix it, it looks awful if you start to put photographs up there and then other parts which are not photorealistic, which are impressionistic. And I don't know how we're going to do that. We can't have a free-for-all and just dump all these things in and expect everything to come and look right. We're probably going to have to limit it and say there will be these distinct periods, probably uh, corresponding to the maps that we have. 
available. Now, I think I've um, been going, probably been going about 20 minutes, and it's probably time I actually stopped. Yes, I think I'll stop there. Thanks very much indeed. And what we'd like to do with those three bird's eye views of the town, we've got them around these numbers, we'll convert them into this and you'll be able to walk around the town or fly around it and see um, a three dimensional model of the town using that pretty accurate um, representations we've got from the drawings in the map.